Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and with the Steam Winter Sale kicking off, it's time to take a look at all those great offers out there and figure out which ones are actually worth picking up. You know, games that won't just sit unplayed in your library, purchased just because of a shiny discount. As always, the focus around these parts tends to be strategy, tactics, sim, city building, and management gaming, and if you have any recommendations of your own, feel free to drop them in the comments. Now with no more time to waste and with timestamps down below, let's begin. Expeditions Rome is currently 40% off, available for just $26 after having released earlier this year itself, and if you're a fan of the Expedition series, you'll absolutely love this one, but if you're unfamiliar with the franchise, this is also a great place to jump in. An isometric RPG with turn-based tactical combat, Expeditions Rome sees you playing the child of an assassinated noble sent off to keep you safe until you're ready to return home as a hero of Rome. Safe, I should mention, from those who would do your entire family harm. You take charge of military operations across multiple iconic theaters of war, managing your war camps, training your troops, and managing the leveling up of and equipment assignment for key characters and supporting troops alike. Major injuries need to be healed at camp, while minor wounds can be managed on the go, and as you travel from location to location, you'll come across all manner of events engaging with the locals, as well as your troops, and side quests will have you chasing unique opportunities for yourself and your close friends alike. You'll craft higher level gear, and of course you'll chase after resources to make said higher level gear, and you'll be assigning duties to your soldiers at camp and on the go. You'll upgrade that war camp to gain access to higher level capabilities, and you'll also prepare for battles against a variety of enemies at a tactical level, yes, but also at a larger strategic scale. Different classes of characters will naturally have different proficiencies, and one of my favorite aspects is how skills are determined by character classes as well as the weapons they're actually carrying, and in what combination. Someone carrying a sword and shield will have different skills available to them than someone carrying a spear and shield, or someone who's just carrying a sword, or just carrying a spear. It's actually quite clever and very engaging. On top of that, the multitude of action point types means there's more of a economy to manage, so to speak, during battle, which is entirely dependent on what kind of attacks, equipment, and abilities you want to use to hurt the enemy or support your allies. There are a lot of moving parts in Expeditions Rome, and none of them feel superfluous or tacked on. I had an absolute blast with the game, and for less than 30 bucks, it's an absolute steal that I can highly recommend. Stellaris is 75% off right now, available for just 12 bucks, and you can watch my DLC buyer's guide linked in the description down below to find exactly which DLC you can actually ignore and which ones are worth grabbing for a fuller experience. They're pretty much all on a massive sale right now, but the base game itself is a great place to start as it's seen many massive updates since launch and is a great foundation besides. Stellaris is a sci-fi grand strategy game from Paradox Interactive that allows you to build your species from scratch, including their biological, sociological, political, and ideological traits, some of which can change over time, of course, while others remain throughout an entire playthrough, affecting your approach and allowing for multiple, extremely varied runs. You can opt to be a pacifist species, living exclusively on utopian Gaia worlds. You can play as slaving roaches that spawn on desolate tomb worlds. You can collect and crossbreed different alien species for fun. You can do any combination of the above and more. And with the DLC, you'll have access to tools to explode stars, crack planets, and more. Though each campaign is played on a procedurally generated map, whether in single or multiplayer, you'll be able to explore the universe to find artifacts, seek out anomalies, and evidence of other intelligent life, while also finding potential threats to your very existence, with stories playing out in the grand scale of the universe in which you're trying to make your mark. From designing your own ships, to appeasing various factions of your government, to working with a federation of alien empires, there are a massive number of moving parts to explore and enjoy with Stellaris, and I do just want to point out that the multiplayer experience is an absolute blast, and only the host of a multiplayer lobby needs the DLC for all players to have access to the features it provides. So, if you have a group of friends itching to try it out, only one person needs the DLC you're curious about, and everybody else can just grab the base game for the ridiculously low price of $12 and enjoy the whole package. Solaris is a beautiful grand strategy sandbox to play in, and it's well worth a buy. Humankind is currently 50% off, available for just 30 bucks, and though it had something of a rocky reception when it first released, the developers have made some massive updates to its most criticized elements, better balancing the endgame, and further exploring how to balance asymmetry. 
Humankind is a historical 4X game, most easily compared to Civilization to quickly understand the kind of mechanics you might expect, but truth be told, it's so very different from the Civ series in so many excellent ways that I think it's well worth checking out. In Humankind, you try to lead your Neolithic tribe through the eras, collecting era stars by performing various tasks to make progress, picking one from a handful of cultures each step of the way until modernity. What you end up with is your own hybrid cultural identity made up with bits and pieces of those that came before it, influencing your progress through the ages, what kind of units and buildings you have access to, and ultimately shaping your civilization from the ground up. Will your pacifist cultural beginnings that focus on agrarianism and development turn to jingoistic tendencies when you find yourself surrounded by dangerous foes that refuse your diplomatic overtures? Or will you stick to your guns or lack thereof instead? Is science your strength through the ages? Or will you abandon it for the farmer's life because of the bountiful lands you luck into? All of these are viable ways to win a game of humankind as you're trying to accumulate fame points by accomplishing tasks in each such category while also seeking out natural wonders of the world, constructing your own, and more. And what's more, beyond cultural decisions, you'll be choosing civics to apply to your nation and you'll be designing your own faith over time as well. All key elements that determine your influence on the world and what rewards you reap and how. Battles are another key differentiator in humankind, often lasting over multiple turns, spread out over multiple grid tiles as two armies collide, asking you to lead them in turn-based tactical battles, taking advantage of terrain, flanking, and more tactical aspects that these kinds of games typically ignore. I really enjoyed Humankind when it first came out, and it's seen some great updates over time that definitely cover up many of the initial blemishes. I can highly recommend checking the game out, especially as it's currently half off and just 30 bucks. Planet Zoo is currently 75% off, available for just 12 bucks, and if you're a fan of management and tycoon type games, this one is a must have. A love of animals is just icing on the cake, but the base game has a career mode, a sandbox mode, challenges, and a franchise mode that blends the versatility and freedom of sandbox mode with the challenge of having to manage budgets and animals across multiple zoos around the world. You'll be managing staff, guests, and animal needs, and the intricate building system lets you get extremely creative as you're able to just move and rotate each individual modular piece to your heart's content to make spaces exactly how you want them. You will sink hours upon hours into that system alone if that's what you're into. I know I did. Either way, DLC adds more animals and pieces, but the base game has a huge selection to start with. It'll be a while before you actually need to pick up any DLC for new content, and paid updates aside, the devs have been churning out free updates available to anybody with the base game to introduce all new things like walking tours for your guests, customizable kiosks and information panels, timed feeding shows, and much, much more besides. Planet Zoo is tons of fun whether you're looking for something that challenges you to properly zone and plan your staffing arrangements, or you just want something with chill vibes, exploring your creativity while learning a thing or two about countless animals through the deep zoopedia while witnessing the simulated behaviors of said animals, their social hierarchies, their nature in captivity, and the process of breeding them for conservation efforts. I've had a ton of fun with Planet Zoo and I'm not even done yet. And at 12 bucks, it is an absolute steal. Clan Folk is currently 20% off, available for just 20 bucks. And if you're looking for a colony management game that's focused entirely on the homestead and everything it takes to keep one running, this is the one for you. Setting aside the need to defend yourself against violent outsiders or animals, Clan Folk is entirely about defending your people against the harsh environment with a great focus on the idea of family. Your colony is exactly that, a clan, a small family that you can either build up from scratch or pick from a preset to start, complete with a set of grandparents, parents and children, as well as any family animals that might help you sustain yourselves in your earliest days. A plethora of stats and mood modifiers are tracked, as one can expect from a good game of the genre, and this goes for the aforementioned animals as well as people as you build shelters from various materials, go hunting, berry picking, fishing, farming, and significantly more activities besides. Weather has a massive impact on well-being, with the harsh winter months being particularly punishing, but even beyond that, you'll find different things grow at different times of year, asking you to plan your harvests as well as your hunting seasons and gathering accordingly. 
Technology itself is unlocked by doing more. And so you find yourself uncovering more and more pieces with which to advance the lives of your family from warmer clothes and fireplaces to iron tools and kitchens. But all that stuff is locked behind you actively participating in various mechanics and systems. It's not like you just click a button and wait until a timer fills up and all of a sudden you've unlocked you know, kitchenware. No, you have to actually find the right kind of resource. You have to extract a certain amount of that resource. And eventually your family gets the idea of, hang on a second, what if we use this resource for this type of technology? And boom, now you can, yes, build your kitchenware. It's a great way of doing it. I absolutely love technology progression that works this way, especially in colony management games. But I digress. There are a ton of other moving parts to manage your family as well, and eventually you're introduced to the concept of trade, allowing you to buy and sell goods to and from other clans, each of whom tend to have some specialization or another, giving you access to resources you can't gather locally, but only if you maintain good relations. You can also build your homestead up with the help of traveling laborers, as long as, of course, you're able to afford their work, and you can opt to build a little tavern or inn, appealing to weary travelers and seeing how they rate your accommodations and services based on the quality of stay you provide, from food to comfort. Clan folk seems simple at first glance, but the level of depth is immense, and with its complete focus on a pacifist scenario, it offers something very different and very much worth exploring. For just 20 bucks, it is an easy recommendation from me. Nebulous Fleet Command is 20% off, available for just 20 bucks. And it's a game I wholeheartedly recommend even at full price, yes, even in its current early access build. If you're even remotely a fan of truly intense tactical combat in space that takes into consideration six degrees of freedom, Newtonian physics, heat signature management, attack vectors, fleet management, and mixes all that up with a visual flair of TV shows like The Expanse, this is the game for you. An excellent hard sci-fi tactics game, Nebulous Fleet Command currently features battles you can play against the AI or against friends using fleets you've custom designed based on a points cost limit, picking between a variety of chassis and classes, and assigning each with a variety of weapons and utilities from radar jammers to repair modules and more. Beyond that, you can even further customize the exact payloads some of these weapons carry, particularly when it comes to missiles, where there's a huge level of modularity and modability, so much so that it was actually a major update to the game during early access. You'll designate some ships as massive missile boats, while others might act as smaller, more nimble scout ships made to ping targets for missiles that rely on target painting. You'll slap on massive railguns that can only fire forward, or maybe you'll swap them out for turrets that operate on a swivel. You'll need point defense weapons to counteract enemy fire, and you'll need to mind which way your ship's facing at any given time to make sure you're able to respond to incoming threats, or at least present a smaller profile to the enemy to increase the likelihood of them missing or hoping to protect the more vital parts of your ships. Ships moving in groups can mask each other's presence, showing up as one blip on enemy radar until visual confirmation, and turning your own ship's radars off will reduce their visibility while also making them blind unless they're sharing data with a separate ship whose radar is actually on, but you know, it's somewhere off in the distance, sneaking around, preventing the enemy from finding your main force. I could spend forever talking about the nitty-gritty ways in which Nebulous Fleet Command takes a detailed approach to space combat, but I hope it's easy to see how all these moving parts come together to make ship and fleet customization an engaging experience and how playing against friends is an especially good time, though the AI is quite capable of punishing players too. I would highly recommend grabbing this one, and if you have a few friends who are into epic space battles, it's definitely one to grab to spend countless hours in multiplayer with. Eventually, the full release will include much more beyond multiplayer, but the foundation is a very strong one here. Against the Storm is currently 20% off, available for just 20 bucks, and it is a very interesting fantasy city builder with survival mechanics and something of a roguelike approach. I know that sounds like a bunch of buzzwords strung together, but Against the Storm is a magnificent example of elements from all of those genres coming together to provide something truly unique. You'll manage multiple species of fantastical creatures, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, and each with their own preferences and needs as far as their overall happiness is concerned. From brewing ale to baking pies, you'll do more than just provide shelter from the constant storm referenced in the game's title. You'll expand deeper into the world, managing multiple cities situated on a grid-based map, all working in tandem towards a central goal by taking advantage of their unique circumstances. And each individual city will have to tackle missions passed down to them from higher up the chain, 
while also pushing through dense forests, seeking groves with resources, unique structures, and at times, threats to the city's existence. Familiar tropes of the genre are there as well, of course. Managing supply chains, resource management, population management, actual, you know, city planning aspects, etc, etc. But the game adds so many fresh ideas into the mix that it's well worth checking out. Not only is Against the Storm an absolutely beautiful game, it just has such a great deal of variety to explore and challenge to tackle, with a very simple premise, but a complex set of mechanics working so nicely together to create a compelling, roguelike, city-building survival experience. For just 20 bucks, it is a great purchase, and there's much more in the works as far as additional mechanics and toys to play with down the line. I would highly recommend picking it up, especially on sale. Workers and Resources Soviet Republic is currently 35% off, available for 26 bucks, and it is well worth the full price tag, let alone the sale price. Though it's still in early access, Workers and Resources is one of the case studies in early access done right, with a constant stream of absolutely massive updates that keep adding on to a very solid concept and set of working mechanics. Workers and Resources is a city builder that features a command economy, putting you in charge of literally everything as the head of not just a single city, but an entire nation, all built up on a single living map. Maps are ridiculously expansive, and since the game clearly takes pride in chasing realism for production chains, you'll find yourself pursuing raw materials across these massive maps, building up production hubs and establishing transportation for raw materials, processed goods, and workers alike. Population centers need to be able to provide for all manner of basic needs, of course, from food to drink to entertainment, but at the same time, you need to concern yourself with commute lengths as people are only willing to travel for so long for work, or heck, for school, for university, for medical attention, and if it's actually foreigners coming to visit your nation, uh, for tourism as well. Buildings can be built using rubles or dollars earned by exporting goods to other nations, and you can import certain goods using money as well, but the game gives you every opportunity to be entirely self-sufficient as well, literally building things from the ground up. You'll watch raw materials get mined out of the earth, processed, and then shipped to building sites where construction workers will be sent over to build up your buildings. But you don't just get those raw materials out of thin air. No, you have to build the mines to mine those raw materials. You have to build the actual processing plants to process those raw materials. And then you need to actually have trucks to move those processed materials to the construction sites. Things don't just happen in this game. Sure, there's an easier way to play it, just spending money to make it so, but for the true experience, at least in my humble opinion, you have to actually go through all of these steps and actually engage with so many fresh mechanics as far as this genre is concerned. My goodness, you will watch pavers and rollers come out to literally build roads. You'll have an infrastructure dedicated to building train tracks alone. You'll be able to manufacture the buses and trains and private vehicles that your people and resources travel around in, as long as you establish, again, the industry and provide it with the raw materials it actually needs. The level of detail in this game is absolutely ridiculous, and the modding scene is ridiculously massive, introducing all manner of new buildings and mechanics alike. I cannot help but sing praises of this game, and you can check out the 100 plus hours of gameplay on my channel if you're curious about more details. I highly, highly, highly recommend this for any fans of city building games that are looking for something that really forces you to think along more realistic terms, whether you're building a bridge or a subway network or a new industrial hub to feed your glorious nation. But there you have it folks, something for everyone during this winter sale. I hope this list helped you come across a game you might have never seen, or maybe it's pointed out a sale for something you've been waiting for. Either way, if it did help you find something, consider hitting the like button, and if you have any favorite picks of your own, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Don't hesitate as always to subscribe for more coverage of games across these genres, and as always as well of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.